I'm not going to lie, Generation 1 Brock is absolutely terrible. Two rock ground types with not a single rock type move to be seen. I'm going to fix him. In this video, I'm going to redesign all eight Kanto gyms and hopefully breathe some new life into these once stale battles. The majority of the team needs to follow the type speciality, but I'm going to use other Pokemon as well as long as they make sense for the gym leader. As expressed in the beginning of this video, Brock's team is very lackluster. Two rock ground types with nothing but normal type moves in sight. That may be because in Generation 1, there was only two rock type moves in the entire game. Yep, that's it. Game Freak thought that throwing a rock and throwing more rocks was the only option. Obviously, Rock Slide is too powerful for the first gym, so let's focus on Rock Throw. I want it to be the signature move of this gym, and that means it's going to be the TM that you get given at the end, and it's also going to be a unique move on the ace Pokemon of the team. So with that in mind, who is going to be Brock's ace? Well, actually out of the 11 rock type moves in Generation 1, only two of them can actually learn rock throw at all, and that coincidentally is Geodude's evolutionary line and Onyx. And since I'm trying to not repeat dual typings, I'm going to take Onyx and disregard Geodude. So now we've got Onyx who has Rock Throw, but who's going to replace that original Geodude? My first pick would be between the Fossil Pokemon. The Rock type gym is right next to where you get the fossils restored, so it makes sense. Aerodactyl is a no-go because of how strong it is. And out of these two, I'm going to pick Kabuto for one reason in particular, and that is Absorb. But the thing it. Hello? <sighs> Hello Ned, what is it? Yeah, I know, I was just about to ex- Yes, Ned, I know. I'm gonna explain that. Okay. <sighs> so as you probably now know, Kabuto needs to be level 34 to learn Absorb. But for this video, I'm not going to obey the levels. It'll be way too restrictive, and quite frankly, Absorb has no business being learnt that late into the game. Gym leaders are meant to be these exceptional trainers, so it makes sense that their Pokemon are exceptional as well. If a Pokemon can learn an attack at any point in the game via TM or level up, it's legal for this video. So with this in mind, Kabuto will join the Onyx. I love how it can use a water and a grass type move since it can counter two of the three starter types. The only type we can't really counter with these two would be grass, but that's where Vulpix comes in. Brock has always been known to have a Vulpix in the anime and he even uses one in Pokemon Stadium. So this is our new Brock team. Two Pokemon that can pose a challenge depending on the starter choice and an Onyx as the ace with that signature rock type move. It's so much more interesting than before, and it's not too difficult. Misty has the same issue as Brock. It's very much the same Pokemon being used twice. Bubble Beam makes for a good signature move, and I don't think I'm going to change Starmie from being the ace either. It's a decent challenge at that point in the game without being too strong. I would, however, change the moveset. Instead of Tackle, I'm going to give it Swift. The fact that it never misses is a bit more interesting than Tackle, and, you know, it's stars, so it fits. I'd also give it Thunder Wave. It will demonstrate the versatility of some Pokemon. So since we've got Starmie, Staryu is getting the boot. Wait, what? <laughs> Instead, Misty's lead is going to be Horsey. Like Starmie, Horsey's synonymous with Misty, and it will be a chance for the player to see another new water type. Since Bubble Beam is going to be the signature move of Starmie, Horsey can get Water Gun. We'll also give it a couple of status moves like Smokescreen and Agility, and we're not going to stop at two Pokemon either. We're also going to give Misty her most popular Gen 1 Pokemon, Psyduck. Psyduck's going to get access to Water Gun just like Horsey, but it can do two new things that the player might not have seen before. First up is a Psychic type attack in the form of Confusion, and second being Disable, potentially disabling any Grass or Electric type moves before Starmie comes out. This would teach the player a lot more than just using Water Gun and Tackle. Once again, there's a lack of diversity in Surge's team. I know they wanted a Monotype team, but why use two Pokemon from the same evolutionary line? Again? This is the first time that I disagree with the Ace Pokemon. Surge doesn't really give off Raichu vibes. I understand that in the anime it's a good rival for Ash's Pikachu, but there's an electric type that fits Surge way more than a chunky mouse. Electabuzz is strong, aggressive, and mean looking. It also gives us a unique signature move in Thunder Punch. I always thought Thunderbolt was a bit too powerful for this point in the game, and it's essentially 
Thundershock, but bigger? It's boring. If you're looking at Electabuzz and thinking, really, that's a bit strong for the third gym, don't you think? No. Base stat total is the same as Raichu. In fact, the special stat is lower, so Raichu's electric attacks would actually hit harder. So Surge is going to get an Electabuzz, we're going to keep his Pikachu, and we're going to throw in a Magneton. Pikachu's job is to be quick and get off some chip damage, and Magneton is to disrupt the player with moves like Thunder Wave and Supersonic. So far, so good, but we still lack diversity in typing. A ground type would bulldoze right through this team, and that's why Surge has a Fero. So Fero would allow Surge to... Hello, Ned. Well, according to the trading card game, Surge had exactly that. A Fero. A bird. Appreciate it. So with Firo, this is Surge's new team. Obviously, we can avoid ground-type moves with Firo, and then the rest are just electric types, really. <laughs> Erika's original team is close to being fine. No evolutionary duplicates, but it does have two grass poison types, so not that diverse. Instead of Vileplume being the ace Pokemon, it's instead going to be the lead Pokemon. Its main job is going to be to disrupt with status conditions like Sleep Powder and Stun Spore, and dealing damage with Mega Drain and Acid. Since we've got Vileplume, there'll be no Victory Bell, but there will be a Tangler. Hi, how are you? Before getting to the ace Pokemon, let's talk about Erika's Porygon. Yeah, Erika should have a Porygon. In the manga, Erika's father works for Sylphco and is credited for creating the original Porygon. In fact, I think the reward Porygon in the game corner and the reward Lapras from Sylphco should swap places. It makes more sense to be given the digital Pokemon from the tech company, right? Porygon's job is to essentially just be unique and show off some more new moves like Tri Attack, Conversion, and Sharpen. It'll also be able to cover Grass's weakness to flying using Ice Beam. Erika's ace is now a big, dopey tree. With its signature move being Solar Beam, its strategy would be to put the target to sleep and then hit hard with Solar Beam. What do you think? Is Porygon a stretch, or do you quite like the outside influence from the manga? I think that Koga's main issue is that his vibe and personality doesn't really make it through to his final team. Why would a ninja have a muck? The Weezing can stay on the team and even remain the ace, with the signature move being toxic. Weezing makes sense because a ninja makes smoke screens. <laughs> Two poison types I'm shocked don't appear on his main team are Arbuck and Golbat. Of course, in Johto, Crobat does become his new ace, but in Kanto, it's nowhere to be seen. Maybe these two are associated with Team Rocket too much? Oh. Okay then. Alongside his poison Pokemon, Koga needs to have a Cypher, right? It has ground type immunity, and if Bug was decent in Gem 1, it could even counter the psychic types too, but... Whoops, I guess they f that one up then. Koga is also known to use Voltorbs as traps inside of his gym. Baba boy. I really think it'll be fun if he had one Voltorb that had Sonic Boom and Self Destruct, so every turn it has a chance of blowing up just to reference the traps in his gym. Just kidding. Fight! Although there's less poison types than his original team, I just feel like this one has a lot more charm and character. It just fits Koga more. We all know what Sabrina is about, and it's this thing. Of course, we're keeping Alakazam, and of course, it's going to be the ace Pokemon. Instead of Psy Wave and Reflect, however, we're going to give it Kinesis and Disable, with Psychic remaining as that signature move. Starmie and Executor are already ace Pokemon of other gyms, so I'm not going to repeat them. And to be honest, they don't really suit Sabrina's vibe anyway. Since there aren't many other Psychic types that I would associate with Sabrina, I'm going to let her have a Kadabra as well. It's not ideal, but it'll do. The only other Psychic type Pokemon that I would give her would be a Hypno, so we'll throw one of them into the mix too. As for her non-Psychic type Pokemon, Venomoth would be a very obvious choice, since she uses one. And I'm also going to give her a Haunter. I feel like it passes the vibe check, and it also uses Hypnosis and Dream Eater, which are two Psychic type moves. Just a small note, Koga and Sabrina actually have the same total levels, indicating that their battles can be done in either order, so I've decided to keep that consistent with the new teams as well. I made Sabrina's a bit more even across the team, meaning I can reduce the level of her Alakazam by one, because we all know, apart from you two, Alakazam is probably the most powerful Pokemon in the game. Our penultimate gym leader is the bald Quizmaster Blaine, and I think his team is just so lame. Four Pokemon, one type, and two evolutionary lines. This is the second to last gym. They should at least have fully evolved Pokemon by now, right? Let's talk about the one thing Blaine's team does right, Arcanine. 
It's an amazing Pokemon to have as an ace, and Fire Blast is a great choice for a signature move. We're obviously going to keep Arcanine as the ace, but we are going to change the move to Flamethrower, which sounds a bit silly, but just trust me for now, I'll explain it all in a bit. As for Blaine's other fire types, he needs to have a Magma. Just like Electabuzz did with Thunder Punch, Fire Punch allows Magma to stand out from the other fire type Pokemon. Magmar is also very synonymous with Blaine since after Red and Blue, it appeared in pretty much all of his teams. His third fire type is going to be Flareon. It's a cool Pokemon and it doesn't see a lot of representation in the games, so it'll be nice for it to be the lead. But now let's get into Blaine's non-fire types, because this is where things get a bit more interesting and you might need to be a bit more open-minded. I initially wanted to give him a Rhydon since he uses one in the anime, but I don't want to use a signature for another gym leader and spoilers. Rhydon is going to be exactly that. Not to mention, Rhydon has a ground weakness and a four times weakness to water, so he's not really helping the team out very much. So instead, I chose Kangaskhan. He's shown to use one not only in the TCG, but also Pokemon Stadium. Not to mention, it can also learn Fire Blast, so I don't know about you, but I'm sold. The final Pokemon Blaine is going to get is... Gyarados. Let me explain. Blaine sets up his gym on an active volcano in the middle of the ocean. How does he get there? Well, yeah, he probably just uses a boat, but imagine if he rode a Gyarados there. That'd be so much better. It'd be a Gyarados that he deliberately trained to counter those rock and ground types that extinguish his fire types. If you're not quite sold yet, just like Kangaskhan, Gyarados can learn Fire Blast. So I know it seems like heresy for a fire type gym leader to have a water type Pokemon. If that water type Pokemon can use the strongest fire move in the game, we need to consider it as a candidate. On to the final gym leader, Giovanni, and this is where I'm making the biggest change by far. Giovanni is no longer a ground type leader. I always thought that ground didn't really make sense for him. The only two ground types that I'm actually going to consider for his team are Nidoking and Rhydon, and that's because they're giant hulking creatures, not because they're ground types. I also don't like the idea of having a ground type specialist in general because Brock exists and rock and ground are just so similar. Instead, he's going to be a mixed specialist, just like Blue is in the Gen 2 games. We're going to keep the Rhydon as the ace, with Earthquake being the signature move, but we're also going to keep a Nidoking, also giving it Earthquake to add to Giovanni's rule-breaking nature as a criminal. Just a small little detail that would give the character a bit more personality in the fight. Next up on the list is a Pokemon that in my opinion is synonymous with Giovanni and Team Rocket in general, and that is Persian. It's the Pokemon that most people associate with Giovanni, so it just makes sense. Some people might see Persian as a bit of a weaker Pokemon, but in Generation 1, your speed stat influenced your critical hit chance, so it was actually quite a powerful Pokemon and would fit right at home on the final gym leader's team. The rest of his team are where we get a bit inventive. I want the rest of his team to hint at his Team Rocket affiliation. He's gonna have a Gengar. And I know that this is Agatha's ace, but don't worry, if these were the gym leaders, I'd also change the Elite Four. I really don't think we have enough ghost types to warrant a ghost type specialist. So in this universe, he's gonna have the Gengar. It's gonna be a reference to at one point him having the Sylph Scope and exploring the Pokemon Tower. In Generation 1, Ghost is an exclusive type, so I don't think Giovanni would turn down the chance to have an exclusive Pokemon. He would also have either a Hitmonlee or a Hitmonchan. This would be whichever Pokemon the player didn't choose from the fighting dojo. If the player never did this, then it would just be random. The idea is that after the player drives Team Rocket out of Saffron, Giovanni returns and steals the other reward Pokemon. Talking of rewards, his last Pokemon is either Kabutops or Omastar, depending on which one you didn't pick. In Mount Moon, you split two fossils with a Super Nerd, but bear in mind, Team Rocket are also in the area. In this new version of the game, if you attend the Fossil Restoration Lab after this point, you'll see the Super Nerd that you met in the cave, and he mentions how some crooks stole the fossil he found. And naturally, when Giovanni hears about the rare fossil-type Pokemon that Team Rocket had just recovered, he wants it for his own. So at face value, it doesn't seem like a typical Giovanni team, but I think knowing the backstory as to why he has these Pokemon makes it a lot more interesting and also personal to the player since their choices actually impact the final gym. So that's how I would revamp the Generation 1 gyms. Which did you like? Which did you not like? Let me know in the comments below, but that's all I've got for you. So, bye.